Hello everyone, Himea Sato here, and welcome to another actually helpful tutorial. In this video I'll show you a few simple steps in setting up a quarry and powering it remotely. In this video I'm going to assume that you already have a decent base with some engines and power so that you can power your machines and quarry. In this video you're going to need 16 ender pearls, 2 coal dust, 3 redstone, 2 sulfur dust, 2 blaze powder, 8 obsidian, 4 lead, 6 copper, 2 tin, 8 silver, 21 diamonds, 28 iron, 28 stone, 30 sticks, 16 gold, 2 shiny metal dust, and 6 pulverized tin. And you're going to also need a magma crucible, a fluid transposer, and an induction smelter, alongside a pulverizer and some sort of furnace. Along with these materials, you're going to need some kind of sorting system to move your items from your quarry to your storage. You can't move these items manually, they'll be coming in too quickly. I recommend an ME network for storage, and I have a guide you can click here to see ME network basics. Here you can see I have a quarry running that's attached to a Tesseract. The quarry is both receiving power and sending items over the Tesseract network wirelessly. On the other end, I've connected the Tesseract to my power source, which is in this case a creative energy cell, and I have an item duct running items to a nearby ME interface which is placing the items into network storage. The first thing you'll need to do for this setup is to create both of your Tesseracts. Tesseracts have changed both in recipe and end result from previous versions. You no longer need to create separate frames for item and energy Tesseracts and the functionality of item, liquid, and energy Tesseracts have been combined into one. Because the recipe for making Tesseracts is a little convoluted, I'm going to go over the steps real quick. Make sure that your magma crucible and your fluid transposer are next to each other, and make sure that the magma crucible side adjacent to the fluid transposer is set to orange, while the adjacent side to the magma crucible of the fluid transposer is set to blue, so that the magma crucible is putting into the fluid transposer. The first thing you want to do is go to your magma crucible and place your ender pearls inside. The magma crucible is going to melt them down into a liquid state. You can see as the magma crucible melts down the ender pearls, it's putting the liquid into the fluid transposer. The next step is to make four pyrothium dust. So we're going to take our redstone, our sulfur, some coal dust, and blaze powder, and make four dust. Now we're going to put two buckets in the fluid transposer. We're going to take each of our resina ender buckets and place three tin above them and one pulverized shiny metal. This is going to make a total of eight enderium blend, which we will then take and place inside of our induction smelter alongside the pyrothium dust. Now that we have our enderium ingots, we're next going to need hardened glass. So we're going to take our eight obsidian and place it inside the pulverizer going to turn our obsidian into obsidian dust. We're then going to take our obsidian and place it inside the induction smelter alongside our lead. When complete, you should have a total of 8 hardened glass. We'll go back to our crafting table and place 4 hardened glass alongside 4 enderium ingots and 1 diamond in the center. Now we're going to take our two frames and put them inside the fluid transposer which will then fill them up with more resonant ender. The final step in creating our completed tesseracts is surrounding the now filled frames with bronze and silver. To make bronze, you're going to take three copper and one tin and place it in the crafting grid, which will give you four bronze. You're going to want a total of eight bronze, so make sure you do this twice. Now we're going to go back to our crafting table, place the two tesseract frames along with eight bronze and eight silver. Now we have our two tesseracts made. For the next step you're going to need to make your quarry. I'll let you guys figure this one out on your own. The first thing you want to do before placing your quarry is hitting the F9 key twice. This will show you the chunk grid and you want to make sure that you place your quarry within one and not on the border. There are two methods to placing a quarry. The first is just placing it on the ground which will give it the default size. The second method is using landmarks. You can place landmarks at up to a 64 by 64 grid, any larger and the quarry won't recognize it. In this example I'm not going to do quite so large. 
Once you've placed three land markers, the first thing you want to do is make sure you mouse off of the landmark. I've had a few problems when clicking landmarks with landmarks. You're going to right click on it with an empty hand and you'll see a red line appear. You want to go to each of the landmarks and repeat this step until you see a large square of lasers outlining the area where you want your quarry to run. Once you have the full box complete, you're going to place your quarry at any one of the landmarks. You can see that it recognized the landmarks and created a larger box here. Now we're going to take our first tesseract and place it on top of the quarry. When you right click on the tesseract, you can see a number of options here. The first thing you're going to want to do is set it to restricted mode so that only you can access the network. I'm assuming if you're playing on a public server that you don't want just anyone being able to take your items or power. The second step is to go to the redstone control and set it to ignored. I tell people to do this because if you have it set to anything else, you could possibly interrupt your tesseract with nearby redstone signals. The final step is the configuration. On the quarry, we want it to be sending items and receiving energy. And make sure you set the fluid mode to blocked just in case you get any mixed up signals. Now we're going to want to make a channel. On the top I'm going to type in 200. You can put any number here as long as it's not the same number as another channel you're already using. And I'm going to give it a name. In this case I'm going to call it Tutorial 2. First I'm going to hit Save Frequency so that it saves the name on the bottom. And I'm going to hit Set Frequency and it will highlight the name and you can see that it's now running on that frequency. Now I'm going to go back to my base here. I'm going to destroy my old Tesseract. I'm going to place a new one so you guys can see what happens. Here you can see I have the Tesseract connected to power and to my sorting system. In this case it's just a pipe running to an ME interface. You can have the ME interface attached directly to the Tesseract, but I find it aesthetically pleasing to watch the items go down a tube into the computer. On this Tesseract we're going to go through the same options except in this one we're going to set the item mode to receive and the energy mode to send and again we're going to make sure that the fluid mode is blocked here we already have the channel name set so we can just click on tutorial 2 and set the frequency the final thing we're going to want to do is because of the way you might have your energy set up depending on if you're using redstone flux which is RF or if you're using minecraft jewels which is MJ if you're using RF, you're going to need to take a redstone energy conduit and attach it to the side. The reason for this is because the redstone flux is being automatically converted into MJ. The quarry only accepts MJs, and the redstone energy conduit has a feature that will automatically convert the RF into MJ. The ratio is 10 to 1, and the quarry can accept up to a maximum of 100 MJ, which means that you can run up to 1000 RF a tick to your quarry. It's okay to be running extra power to it, just know that it will not be used. When the quarry is setting up, it will automatically place a box around it, and it will clear out any items as well. You don't have to worry about clearing out a space for your quarry because it will delete anything inside. When the quarry is completed, you'll see the large diamond drill automatically begin removing blocks. The blocks will be going into the Tesseract, which are then spitting out from the other side here, going straight into my ME interface. You can see it's quite a large number of items depending on how fast your quarry is running, and it's why you need an automatic system in order to sort these. Here I'll show you an example that you can have multiple quarries running off of one Tesseract. Just remember that when you're using a Tesseract to power two quarries at the same time, they'll only be receiving half the amount of power. A Tesseract can only send up to a maximum of 100 MJ a tick or 1000 RF a tick. You can also have multiple quarries running on the same frequency. Just keep in mind that certain sorting systems might have a limit of how many items that they can run per tick. I don't want to wait around for these quarries to actually reach lava, but keep in mind that quarries will not mine through lava. Sometimes it's a good idea to put your quarries on top of a source of water, because as they dig down, the water will hit the lava and turn it into obsidian. Oftentimes I find that the quarries will just hit sources of water anyways long before they do hit lava, so don't worry too much about this. Just remember that if you set up a quarry on a volcano, it's probably not going to get very far. Quarries will mine through other sources of liquid, including oil and toxic materials you might find added by biomes of plenty. But as I said before, they will not mine through lava. Quarries will stop functioning as soon as they hit bedrock, 
but they will also stop consuming power. You can break a quarry with just a simple pickaxe, along with Tesseract. Keep in mind that once you set your Tesseract to a private mode, it can no longer be picked up by other players either. If for some reason your Tesseract or quarry aren't functioning, make sure you go through this checklist first. Are both of the sides of your system chunk loaded? The quarry automatically chunk loads its own side as long as you have the Tesseract placed on top of the quarry. Make sure that your base is also loaded at all times with a chunk loader or yourself. Make sure that there's no redstone signals interfering with the Tesseract or quarry. A redstone signal will automatically turn either of these off if you have them set improperly. Did you make sure that when clicking the check mark on each of your Tesseracts that you actually set the frequency? If not, make sure that the frequencies are actually set. Are both the Tesseracts set to the proper send and receiving mode? Make sure that each of the quarry and the base Tesseracts are set to the proper direction. If you're sure you've gone through that checklist and it still isn't functioning, you might want to try moving or replacing the Tesseract or the quarry. That's all on setting up quarry and powering it remotely. Based on popular demand, I'll be going over the basics of beekeeping and forestry tree breeding in my next video. Feel free to leave questions in the comments below, and don't forget to rate and subscribe. Who's to blame? It's the same way every time we speak. We're not changing. This is over. You're not making That's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. Ha. Ha ha.